M children, I know you'd missed me. Uh, we're entering into 9.3. Oh, can't see my head as much. And there we go. Uh, entering into 9.3 tests about a population mean. Uh, think about everything we've done so far. I'm going to sketch this out. We're going to do this probably on Friday. Uh, we'll actually be through all the content on Friday. And one of the first things we'll probably do on Friday, and pr most of what we'll do, is uh, probably start the tree diagram. So again, think about what that tree diagram is going to have. It might have uh, proportions. It might have means. Uh, and think about what kind of data gives that. Uh, could be either qualitative or qual quantitative. Excuse me. Uh, so our first decision, again, think about what it'll be. It'll be prop proportions or means. And most of the time with proportions, uh, that means it's going to be Z stuff. And most of the times with means, that means it's going to be T stuff. And think about what we're going to have to do after we've made our first decision about what kind of data we've got. We're going to have to say, okay, is it a, is it a uh, test or an interval? I'm going to go interval or test. And then the last thing we're going to consider, is it one sample or two samples? One sample or two samples. Again, down here on the bottom, interval test. The cats are chasing. Test. And then one, two, one, two. And we have a name for each one of these processes. Think about that. We have our one sample Z interval for P. We have our two sample Z interval. Jesus, everybody okay down there, cats? For P. And we can continue on in such a way. I'll construct one of these for you on Friday. Uh, and uh, that's, so you know, know that that's coming. Uh, but you're saying, man, we got a lot of stuff right now. We've got eight tests or eight procedures. We really have to know uh, when it's appropriate to use each one. And hopefully you're getting to the point where you see, that's the challenge. That's the challenge here. All right. So, um, Let's get started on 9.3. Uh, it says homework's due tomorrow. Uh, I don't care if you turn in homework on Thursday. Uh, it just get it done by Friday when you turn the quiz in, because that's really when I'm checking all this. Uh, normally, I'm still an assignment every day, but if you get the homework done by the quiz time, that's when I check all of it. So just, you know, get it done. you got two days to do a homework assignment and a quiz based on this content. You're getting it right now. So, 48 hours. You can do this. Uh, and guys, I check stuff late. Just fucking email me. Email me. Okay. So, let's let's get to it. Uh, 9.3 test about a population mean. We have a t-test for a population mean. Uh, I'm going to add, uh, what are we going to call this? We're going to call this a one sample. T-test. Uh, I'm going to call it typically from mu. Uh, so we'll have our one sample t-test from you, and uh, down below we have here our two sample uh, t-test for mu1 minus mu2. And I hear a phone going off. Give me a moment. All right, let's try that again. So we have our one and two sample t-tests for mu, or mu1 minus mu2. We're saying, where is this mu? Do we have enough evidence to say that it's not where it was claimed to be? Again, our, our hypotheses look the same. Mu equals the hypothesized value, or a greater than, less than, are one-sided, or are not equal to, are two-sided. Looks the same. Our conditions are the same as always. Random, normal, and independent. The most difficult condition being the normal condition. Is the sample size sufficiently large? Uh, again, or you can say, look at a box plot and you want to see with no skew or outliers. Um, so we're looking, at, if you don't have a sample size of at least 30, in which case you'll recall you get to invoke that central limit theorem, uh, you need to look at a box plot and ensure that it has no skew or um, outliers. As always, you're going to calculate the test statistic. St test statistic. You're not actually going to calculate it. Your calculator is going to do it for you. Uh, where is my calculator? Huh, I have to find that. Oh, there, I found, found, found it. Found it. All right, so uh, we've got these two tests. Uh, P-values, same P-value. Your uh, degrees of freedom, recall, is N minus 1, something we had back from Chapter 8. Um, 
conclusion p-value less than alpha, reject the hoe, otherwise fail to reject the hoe, and then we either do or don't have enough evidence for ha in context. Take a moment to write that. We do or we don't have enough evidence for the ha in context. Uh, and some people left that off their um, quiz the first time. Uh, comparing two means looks the same. Uh, comparing the responses to two treatments or the characteristics of two populations. Uh, the most important thing here, and you need to circle this, is you need to have a separate sample for each treatment. Separate sample. If it's the same sample, it's going to be a one-sample t-test for a paired t-test. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, Two-sample t-test uh, test statistic looks the same. Uh, think about what it is. The thing that's missing here is minus, what's the hypothesized difference, mu1 minus mu2? What's the hypothesized difference going to be? Well, the hypothesized difference is going to be that they're equal. That is zero difference. Uh, so they don't need to put it in there because zero is assumed. Uh, and the last thing, matched pairs. Recall what matched pairs is. I'm going to use my red pen. Matched pairs is... Well, who, who, is, who is best for our matched pairs? Our twins, you know, twin studies. They're nice if they're consenting. Not nice if they're run by the Nazis. Don't be a Nazi. Don't be a Nazi. Good advice. Good advice. Matched pairs. What is matched pairs? We give two treatments to a single individual. And that allows us to see uh, differences on that individual for the two different treatments. Excuse me. Uh, so a pre-test and a post-test. You know, you would expect those differences uh, if it's post minus pre. You would expect those to go up. And look, learning the content does indeed make your test scores go up on it. Uh, so if there's a single set of subjects... One subject and two treatments, it's going to be matched pairs. One set of subjects and two treatments each. That's going to be this matched pairs case. Excuse me. Allergies are hitting me hard. I'm going to go blow my nose. Pause. All right, I'm back. Okay, so, uh, we have our tests. Uh, we're going to be doing these in our calculator today. Um, in your calculator, this is just called a t-test. Uh, and in your calculator, this is called a two-sample t-test. So we've got our t-test and our two-sample t-tests. Uh, and what's the work? The work, is, as you, have, you figured out by now, is mostly the do step. Can I check the conditions? That's most of the work here. Uh, so uh, we've got... Um, I'll, let me tell you what we're going to actually do here today. And I'm going to get out, get you out of here under 30 minutes. We're going to do... A test to see if there's a difference in mean reduction of some cholesterol drugs. One sample. We're going to skip fish friends. It's going to be an AP review question. Might come back to that later. Might do it on your own. Uh, we are going to do... Do I want to do that one? Yeah, we're going to do these. We're going to basically do two examples. I'm going to do a one sample example, a two sample example. We'll probably come back and pick some of this out again on Friday. Um... But uh, really just two examples here. So let's, let's start. Uh, we're going to start somewhat counterintuitively with the two-sample example. Uh, but in truth, that's going to be the one that's more common, actually, to see on the test. They like, you know, compare two treatments. you got a, you got a placebo and you got a cholesterol drug. Maybe, maybe you want to see, does, does hydrochloroquine do anything? Do you know why Dr. Anthony Fauci won't say hydrochloroquine? Oh, it's magical. Because he doesn't, he doesn't compare it to anything. You can't just have a bunch of sick people. Give them, maybe I start handing out old bananas to everyone that has uh, COVID-19. I just start, I hand out old bananas to them. Think about this. I go hand them out old bananas, and lo and behold, most of the people I gave my old bananas to, they lived. Wow, it's so effective. So effective. It's the old bananas. They ate the old bananas, then they recovered. Hence, it's the old bananas. No! Your president didn't take statistics. He knows many things, I think. But statistics might not be one of them. So, you need a baseline. 
That's chapter four. He would not get the good score on the AP exam. Don't understand about baseline. All right, so we're comparing these two mean reductions in cholesterol. You know, you want your cholesterol to go to go down, you know. And some people took some placebo and their cholesterol went down. Some people ate my bananas and their COVID-19 away went away, but you know, eh, let's let's leave that alone. Okay. Uh so we got some middle-aged dudes uh with some moderately high cholesterol readings. Okay. Uh, 10 of the 20 were randomly assigned. Oh, random assignment. That's nice. To group A, I always circle random assignment. You know they're going to ask about it. Did they randomly select? Did they randomly assign? Are you circling this? You should be if you're not. Uh, and the other group uh, placebo, uh, received a placebo, uh, appropriate exercise and diet. Uh, the other 10 males got the drug and uh, advice and exercise on diet. Uh, and a drug there. So after three treat, uh, months post-treatment cholesterol readings were taken for all 20 males and compared to the pre-treatment cholesterol readings. They give the reduction in cholesterol. So these numbers are reductions. So a positive number means it has gone down more. What's a negative number mean? Their cholesterol has gone up. Um, yeah, look at this weirdo. Look at that weirdo. His cholesterol went up after taking the drug. Um, so what do we have here? We have group A, group B. The, the data provide convincing evidence. If you see this phrase... That tells you it is four-step process time. Uh, at the alpha equals 0.01 level, the cholesterol drug is effective in producing a reduction beyond, that is, greater than produced by exercise and diet. So let's go ahead and set this up, our state step. Um, uh, we want uh, mu sub A and mu sub B, the mean reduction for the placebo group and the mean reduction, I'll do one and two, it doesn't matter, for the um, drug group. And what's, uh, what's the null hypothesis? I go in and I assume the drug doesn't do anything. You have to go in saying, oh, the drug probably doesn't do anything. I need evidence to show that it does do something. So the null hypothesis, the mean reduction from the first group equals the mean reduction from the second group. I don't have any evidence yet that the drug is better than the standard of care. The drug plus this, think about that. You know, somebody comes into the hospital and you're doing a hydrochloroquine study. They'd come into the hospital and you'd flip a coin and say, oh, you're getting the standard of care. You're getting everything we would do normally. If we didn't know hydrochloroquine was a thing, let's do everything we do to help this person with a respiratory illness recover. And then on the other side, it's everything you do for the respiratory illness plus the hydrochloroquine. Treatment plus standard of care. Uh, your ha there is that your um, mean reduction from your drug group is going to be greater. Beyond. This beyond word here is leading me to that inequality there. So I've got my state step. Uh, I'm going to make this a 1 and a 2 there, just to be clear. I'm sorry, I got kind of sloppy. Uh, so we've stated we need to go ahead and make a plan. Our plan will be to first name the test. This is a two-sample uh, T interval. Not T interval, check that. T test for mu1 minus mu2. Uh, and we have our uh, random sample. Yes, indeed. Um, we have that they were independent samples. Yes, we were given that. And the goofy one here, though, is going to be normality. Normality is weird because N1 equals N2, which was 10, which is not more than 30. So we need to look at box plots of the data. Um, so think about that. We need normality or we need approximate normality. We, we at least can't get away with this if there's a whole bunch of skew. So you need to get your calculators out. Um, and you need to go ahead, clear that out, hit link, go in your, or stat, go in your data. Uh, we're going to edit these lists of data. Um, I'm going to put group A and L1.
Mm, there you go. Got your data in your calculator. Uh, and then I'm going to oh, look at this. We can look at side by side plots. My God, what a glorious day. Uh, so we'll go to plot one, make sure that's on. Put L1 in that. Go to plot two, turn that one on as well. Put, oops, put L2 in that. Uh, and then you can actually zoom nine and, oops, I can quit, zoom nine and look at both plots simultaneously. Um, so what do we got here? A four to 30. Guys, I'm, I'm going to just kind of sketch this out. Uh, what am I going to do here? I'm going to show this. Negative 4 to 30. And uh, I'm just going to do like that. Oh, this is bad. I did a bad job drawing this. And I'm basically just going to wave my hands and say that there's no significant skew or outliers there. Box plot shows no significant skew or outliers. Um, you need to label at least a couple points. Um, as long as you've labeled two points, you're, you're technically good. Um, so you've stated you've planned the data's in your calculator now. Um, you'll notice you could have also done this using the stats. It did give you the stats. So you could use the data option or the stats option when you're doing this test. If you don't know what I'm talking about, let's look at it. Uh, we are doing a two sample t test. Take a look at the options you get here. You get uh, two options. You can put in the data. We've already put the raw data in in L1 and L2. Or we can put the stats in. We actually know the stats as well. You know, they're 10.2 and 7.66. But we don't have to worry about that because we've got them already. So I'm going to go data because I've put the data in. Uh, leave that largely as is. I am going to change my alternate hypothesis uh, to a less than. Yes. Pooled is always no. And I'm going to go ahead and calculate it. I'm just going to record all those values. I'm just going to record all those values. I'm going to record the t-statistic, the p-value, and the degrees of freedom. My do-step, do my uh, p-value uh, is 0 0.0619. My t-statistic is negative 1.617. And my degrees of freedom is 17.29. Think about what this is saying. If these were truly equal, if they truly had equal mean reductions... Well, what did we see? We saw a difference in mean reductions um, that was, what would that be? Mu1 minus mu2 would be negative. We saw something like down here. And we said, okay, this is how often that would happen. It would happen about 6% of the time. Is that rare enough? And we said 6% of the time. It's not. It's not less than the 0.01 we're using. Uh, so our conclude uh, since our p-value greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't have evidence to say that the drug uh, is effective in producing I'm just going back to the phrasing from the question. I'm just stealing the prompt from the question. Producing a reduction beyond a placebo. And I've run out of room. Take your time and fill it in there. So, uh, so that's our two um, sample T test. Uh, let's look at exactly one more example. Uh, you can do the fish problem. If you say, I need another example of this. Do the dang fish problem. It's from 2010, number five. There's, it's a straight plan, a straightforward state plan. Do conclude. Go back and do it. You can search for that if you want to. Uh, this is a number six problem, and normally is when in the year I'd start introducing number six problems, but we're not going to have one this year, so I'm not going to worry about it too much. But I am going to look at this last one, 2009B. Uh, number five, just because it's got a simulation. And I don't know if they're going to throw a simulation at you on this test, but i got to show you one. 
I gotta show you at least one. All right, so bottle filling machines. It might surprise you that bottle filling machines don't always put exactly what you programmed them to put in the thing, right? Uh, it's set to dispense 12.1 fluid ounces into the juice bottles. Great. Uh, you know, to ensure it's filling random, filling accurately, it selects four bottles. Uh, and measures them if there's convincing evidence that the mean is different from 12.1 or, this is a new one, the standard deviation is greater than 0.05. So the mean is different, so that's like a not equal to 12.1, and the standard deviation, that's a, that's a greater than. Okay, so we, we don't want the mean to be different from 12.1, and we don't want the spread of the values to be greater than 0.05. Um, so during one hour... Uh, the mean number of fluid uh, ounces of four randomly selected bottles, 4, n equals 4, uh, was 12.05. That's our x bar. And the standard deviation of the sample was 0.085. So I'm going to label all my values. I've got n equals 4, I've got my x bar, and I've got my standard deviation of x. Part A, perform a test of significance to determine whether the mean amount of juice is different from 12.1. And we get to happy days, assume the conditions for inference are met. So state step. Uh, what are we talking about here? We're talking about mu, the mean amount of juice dispensed. And our null hypothesis is that it's working. I assume that it's working properly. I need some evidence to show that it is not working properly. Uh, so we've stated. That's all I need in my state step. Uh, my plan step is even easier here. Plan, uh, we're going to do a one sample t-test. Uh, and we were told to assume conditions are met. Uh, so that's, that's most of the work there. Our do step, remember this is going to just be in our calculator called the t-test. Let's do it. Stat uh, tests, second one from the top, t test. Uh, we have we don't have the data here, so we need to choose the stats option. Mu sub naught. That's our hypothesized mean, twelve point one. Uh, our observed x bar, twelve point oh five. Our observed standard deviation, point oh eight five. And our sample size here was four. And I'm going to choose a not equal to alternative. So make sure your calculator looks good like that. I'm going to calculate. And we're going to record every value I got. My t statistic is negative 1.176. My p value is much too large, is 0.324. Let's round up, call it a 3. And um, yeah, if you wanted to, you could report here that degrees of freedom is n minus 1 is 4 minus 1 is 3. You should probably report that. So we've stated with plan we've done. Now we need to go ahead and conclude. Um, but it should be pretty easy here. So since our p value greater than alpha, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We don't have evidence that the mean amount dispensed is different from, uh, what is it, 12.1 ounces. All right, so that's part A. Part B is weird. Part A, I'll zoom back out, let's look at part A. That's part A. I mean, that's, that's, all, that's all part A. Pretty straightforward state plan, do conclude. Um, you're going to have one of those. Uh, part B, we did a little simulation. This is a weird part. Let's take a look back at the part B. Uh, to determine whether the sample of four bottles provides convincing evidence that the standard deviation is greater than 0.05. So here we've got like a hoe that sigma equals 0.05, and we've got our ha. That's like sigma greater than 0.05. Take a moment to record that, because that's kind of what's going on here in Part B. Uh, a simulation was studied. A simulation study was performed. Uh, we had 300 samples, each of size 4. 
uh, with a norm from a normal population with mean 12.1, standard deviation 0.05. Okay, so we pretended. Okay, let's pretend like this is actually what we want it to be. Uh, how often would we get a result out as far as we got? Use the results of the simulation to explain why the sample, the sample, provides or does not provide evidence that the standard deviation exceed of the juice dispensed exceeds 0.05. Well, what value did we got? We get. We got 0.085. 0.85, that's our observed SX. How many are greater than that? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, was it 7, uh, 12. So it looks like 12 out of 300. Um, so well, what is 12 out of 300? That's about 0 0.04. As extreme or more extreme. What is this, guys? That's a p-value. This is a simulated P value. We're saying, okay, let's simulate. Let's, let's say it's true. We're going to assume it's true. We're going to do a bunch of these and say, how often would we get a value that far out? And we see that that variability that we got is very rare. Does it provide evidence? Um, B. The simulation gives a simulated P value. of 0 0.04 a sample standard deviation this high is rare and rare enough as our p-value is less than alpha so we can reject the ho we have evidence that the standard deviation of juice dispensed exceeds 0 0.05. Uh, you can also take a look at this online uh, if you want a cleaner um, key. Again, guys, just freaking search this, search it do a little bit of work on your own. Uh, that's all I've got for you today. Uh, let's keep flipping through. Uh, I do want you to notice this one thing here. Just take a moment to say to yourself, okay, looking at this data, is this a one sample or a two sample test? Pause. Think about it. That's all I want you to think about for the next 30 seconds. One sample or two sample. One sample. two treatments. The one thing I do want you to see is that this is going to be a matched pairs t-test and that you need an A minus B difference column down here at the bottom. That's the first thing you have to do to solve this problem. Come up with an A minus B difference column. So one minus the other, negative 0.3, positive 0.5, etc. So uh, this is a test for the differences. Um, we'll come back to that next time. What do we got here? We got some example problems at the back. You should take a look at them. We'll look at them next time. You should take a look at them. Uh, and then look at all this crap we got. Back page here kind of summarizes everything we've done. We've got tests. Uh, we've got intervals all this freaking stuff. Um, so take a moment, look through this. We've done a lot of work. Um, homework and the quiz realistically is all due Friday. I don't really care. Uh, short, uh, what am I, 29 minutes. You want to see a cat? You can leave if you don't want to see a cat, but here's a cat. It's going to be George today. All right, George, come here. George was hunting the straw on a string. This is George. He's the fluffiest boy that we have. Hello, George. How you doing? You want to stand on the stand on the document camera? That's George. He is in fluffing shedding season, which is great for me with allergies. It would help if you take your allergy pill. See you guys.